I said play nice. It's really hard to hear you. I like, know because the I'm PA talking no in this low voice. Yeah, it's just it's really weird. You're weird. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> what was the what was the question? Ask Are we doing another one? Brian can tell you. Let's go another one. <laughs> the panelists on the end is being difficult. <laughs> it will not be asked back next year. Uh, the, uh, I think, you know, uh, the pool of applicants that developers can, can pull from, obviously it's a big pool, very crowded, full of energetic, flopping fish. Um, why you guys? Why choose you guys over somebody who's fresh out of you know, Joe Blow Technical Institute. Well, I think it's probably because they already know us. I mean, I think that's pretty much how all of us got where we are, is because we had these relationships. And um, probably the most important advice I can give everyone is don't be a dick. Because, uh, oh, yeah. disagree. Except for you. <laughs> <laughs> except for you, because uh, it doesn't apply. I think, I think I've proven that yeah, rule. I, I think you, your, your whole career is based on being a dick. Yeah. But everybody else here, generally, we're nice. Kind, yeah, you guys seem very nice. Yeah. I, I, don't know how, I don't know how we got where we are, but, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's because they know us already, and you know we're kind of a known quantity. Whereas, you know, you get somebody fresh out of school, and they they think they know what the industry is like, but if you haven't been around the industry for a while, and you haven't met these people, and you don't know what they're really like, um, it can be very different. It can be very weird. And even as a journalist, you really you understand the people and the personalities and the way things work. And there's a reality to making games that it's actually work that you may not get if you're right out of college. You may think it's still fairy dust. Yeah, I was, I was going to add too that like uh, they know at least when I was talking to people, they know for sure that we'll work late hours and weird hours, like because it's just a given for getting your magazine or your website set up and ready to go and getting stuff posted. So when your build comes in at eleven and you need to test it until three so that you can get bug reports back to them in the morning so they can work on it during the day and then upload you a new build at eleven, you'll do that even though it's annoying. But you'll totally do it because you want to get your game made. <laughs> and yeah, so I'd go to work during the day and then I'd go home for a couple hours and then come back at 11, play my build till 2 or 3, then go home, come back the next morning. And I think there's an expectation there that these, like, that all of us have done that when we were journalists and that we would be willing to continue to do that. Or to try to do that. Maybe I'm a sucker. No, I mean, another good, I mean, Craig brought up, everybody brought up a good point. Like, look at Craig. Craig was a sports guy at EGM and he played all the sports games. Like he loves football. He's like one of the biggest football fans I know. And so like when they were hiring, why not look at someone like Craig who's played every version of Matt, played every you know, and even even the outside other sports games, so he can know he knows what features resonate with sports fans. So he's a great he's a great potential hire. And I'm boring. So I mean I, I think why, you know, why not Craig? I mean, why not someone like him who knows they know when they're hiring him they're gonna know someone who really knows that genre and that sport really well. Well, I mean, isn't that, I mean that's, that's sort of the same with your familiarity with Insomniac products. I mean, my familiarity with, with mm -hmm. Halo. I mean, I, my God, I played, I played an embarrassing amount of Halo. And I'm, I'm absolutely sure that. I mean, it wasn't like sit down and be like, hey, let's play one-on-one -on -one for a job. Though, there, interestingly enough, is a guy at Bungie who did that. That's like the last part of his loop, which is like the fun, the fun person. Uh, it was, uh, I'm not going to say who it was. That'd be bad, but... But yeah, he, he used to be amazing at Halo 2, and now he's like really decrepit and bad, and like, he's just, like, I, like he's just bad at all games, now he's gone soft. Thanks for that, man. What was it? I just, I keep forgetting the question. Can I get a list? <laughs> I just, I just short Let him go first. How about, you're going to go first this time. How's that? Fine. Okay. <laughs> um, obviously, you guys have uh, money. <laughs> you probably drive nice cars. You, uh... I drive a Saya. I don't even know what that is. Well, it's, it's like a Saya. Like yeah, no, it's like a weird toy, but it's like a bread truck. Oh. But I have to admit I love. You know, but anyways, yeah. Well, you're more well-to-do than I am. Let's, let's put it that way. Um, so obviously, you're probably a little more comfortable than you were as, a, as games writers. There's a Tyrannosaurus outside. <laughs> um, the, uh, you know what I'm looking for is, is, is a moment in which your unique experiences, your backgrounds, 
you were able to draw on your years as, as writers or as, as in Jason's case, as, as PR people, uh, and bring something to bear on the development process. There was a moment in which you saw something that nobody else in the room would have been able to see. Um, Luke, let's start with you. I, that, I'm actually a really bad person to start with because my example is an example actually I can't even really talk about. But the, the, Can you the, use code words? No. Jones. I mean, I, I, there's some interesting oversight <laughs> that I guess that we've made along the way, and um, we, we recognize them, but there wasn't really anyone to to have the time to, to step up and, and fix or work on said oversights. And that's sort of, I mean, being able to see a, a gap that you can fill when you when you start at a place like Bungie, which, I mean, if you remember the Dream Team in 1992, like Jordan, Magic, Carl Malone, Charles Barkley, and then like Christian Leitner, and you're Christian Leitner, like that's what it's like when you were in Bungie. And you walk in the first day and you're like, I hit a big shot in college against Kentucky. And they're like, yeah, I got six rings. <laughs> so, so when when you do finally get a, a, a chance to to continue the sports metaphor for Craig and Brian, when you do finally get a chance to take a shot, it, 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 the ball bounces in your favor. It's pretty exciting. Is that are you okay with that? I will accept that. <laughs> Brian, can, can you be more specific? Maybe? Yeah, I mean, I remember first time we were gonna show Resistance Two single player. I mean, I I had I had the demo, and I basically played it like a journalist. What would our journalist say? And I'm not gonna lie, I freaked out. I was like, we, we can't show this. And um, I, mean, I grabbed my boss and put him, dragged him outside because I mean, I was still pretty early and I was not embarrassed, but I was like worried, like are they just gonna think, you know, what am I, what, oh God, here he is, this is, you know, being, you know, Mr. EGM, he's gonna, you know, he doesn't really know how games are still made. And, but the greatest thing was, the greatest thing about Insomniac was that one of the lead designers came over to my desk and just sat there for like an hour. And